Yo, what's going on, guys? Psychopoco here, bringing you another Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross video. For this, we'll be doing the podcast for the state of Grand Cross. Uh, we'll be doing the podcast this time with a thematic base, as you can see. We have many little emotes here. Have fun. So, uh, starting up, uh, let's go with some intros. Uh, over here, we got Spam. Go ahead. Hey guys, this. welcome. Uh, thanks for having me again. Hi. <laughs> That's Spam and Rice. He likes to say he's free to play. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. I didn't want to say it to someone. I didn't want everyone to sigh at me. Free to play, by the way. <laughs> All On right. the way to 210 CC. Uh, Darkskin, you're up. What's up? It's your boy Darkskin, Fairy Gang in the building. You already know what it is. We had Nog. Hi. That's, that's all he has to say, as usual. Damn, we have Sasuke oh, here. Oh my god. He, he may be dressed up special for the occasion, but you know it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I I I use my left arm by accident. I hope no one noticed it. <laughs> Yo, Alex, you're up. He's got the cereal. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Don't get breakfast. Uh, now we got Carrie, brand new edition. Carrie, introduce yourself. Uh, hello, hola. I'm Carrie, uh, Carrie Enforacido from from YouTube. I'm Spanish, and I don't. I I'm going to to say sorry because I don't know a lot about Tolkien in English, but I I can try. Arigato gozaimashita. He, <laughs> he was wearing a cape. He was wearing. I saw it the whole time. Bruh. You, you since, he's gonna, yeah. since he's gonna speak a little bit of Spanish, I think I should speak a little bit of Portuguese as well. So if, we have a lot if you of want. All right. Okay. Okay. I, I can speak in some Japanese too, just just to make it extra weird. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so first topic of the week coming up, we have the most hype thing that everyone wants to talk about because everyone's excited about it is Las Vegas Meliodas is coming to the game. And is it? Yeah, I, I mean I saw a ticket and <gasps> no one freaked out. No one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any videos or anything else about it. Absolutely no one freaked out. All right. So the first question, of course, is, is this too soon or is it on the right time? What do you think? Take it away. Too soon. That's Let me it? Put in perspective. Let me put I'm just going to say too soon and stop? No, no, no. no. Let me put in perspective. Yeah, Lost there's, more, there's more to explain 10, if you don't think it's too soon. Then if you think it's too soon, it's pretty self-explanatory. Sure. 10 months to release on JP and 6 to release on Global. That's a four month difference. Like, it's, 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 uh, it's quite, high, quite uh, fast, actually. I definitely think it's too soon. Like, um, a, a lot of Global players or people that didn't play JP, they feel like it's a really good time to release them. A lot of people don't understand what he does to the game. Because I've been talking to a lot of people about it. And they're just oh, like, he ruins the game. Yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, like, if I'm free to play and only get a 1-6 Lost Vein, I can't do anything. When I got Lost Vein on JP, 1-6, I was one-shotting people. Like, early on, he's, he's just a cancer to the game. It's way too early. No, let, let me explain. Let me explain. He ruined the game, okay? It's like PvP right now on Global, I play and it's fun. I, I go play JP and it's not, okay? It's how it is. He ruined the game. Ever, if you don't have Lost Vein, you're not going to play PvP. I'm um, just saying. And, and that's that the same the, thing that happens with Elizabeth. Yeah. And that was, the, that was the thing that a lot of JP players were praising about Global is that they were delaying units in a way. Like, for example, they released Monspeed before Lost Vein, which is what they did, didn't do on JP. And so he actually had value. And Nag's video, who's like so excited to use Monspeed because he could actually use Monspeed in, in, in PvP without getting shit on. And yeah. now they're just going to piss all over that strategy because... They're not, are they going to bump out Droll and Gloxinia and how many other units before him in order, in order to not have that happen again? Right? Yeah. I think it's um, too early, but like, who else would be hyped for six months? You know, I don't want to know like Elizabeth for six months or anything like that. So I, I didn't really know any other option, but I'm, I'm hyped about it. It is too early. I know it's going to be a little less fun, but I couldn't think of any other unit, you know, because I've not been Kabuki. They've been uh, predicting six months for a while for this guy. They pump up banners every single week on Global, and like JP, that they pump banners every single two weeks. Um, so it, it doesn't feel like it's too soon because you're used to getting a banner every single week. Yeah. But man, it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. I what I hope they do after the six month anniversary is I start delaying the banners down to two weeks and stop like instant releasing banners every single week because right now on the uh, the one week release order, very few players have. Uh, 
a way to get around the pull fatigue. So the only the only people that are able to say, oh, I really, really want to get this unit. I want to get that next unit. They're not able to pull for it because they had to pull like two weeks ago or three weeks ago and they weren't able to get anything done because they weren't able to save diamonds or buy enough BOGO or whatever. So I hope they delay it a little bit better. I don't think they are... Uh, Lost Bane is, is too early, obviously, oh. but I don't think that... Um, that it's the problem that Lost Bane comes out for six months. I think that the problem is that we have already uh, a lot of a lot of units that are so good before Lost Bane comes. Um, for example, the Ready, I, I think that in JP comes two months earlier or something like that, or so one month good. earlier. But uh, we have the Ready two weeks uh, before Lost Bane appears on the game. I think Derry came out about three weeks or four weeks before LV, yeah. right? It was much faster. I mean, I'm sorry. It was much earlier, like mm -hmm. in comparison. I, I, no, no, no. I, I remember it was the 28th because the the week the two weeks before that was the Valentine's banner, and then the, it was LV. And then it was LV on the 17th. So it was only two weeks before, actually. Two and a half. Let's let Turing carry up. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, so if, it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for that ticket leak, I would have 100% put on Dairy Gary. Like, I wanted her, but then, like, wow, it's two weeks away, you know? Yeah. I'm taking off this cape. Okay, so. Then, <laughs> five can, minutes, 45 seconds. <laughs> it's so like, even last ah, I do like the vest, though. Hot. The vest is nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I so, couldn't put this pretty much, like, Two weeks ago i lost so much weight i'm so proud of myself good Congrats, job bro. Dude. good job all right um so do the next question because now uh with that new information of it being about two weeks i guess between do you think that lost vein uh, on the lost vein meliotis banner derriere will be on the lv banner mm. no yeah like, no, they, they've, changed, shouldn't, but... they've changed pretty much every banner on global they changed Almost, almost every banner, right? They kept the shitty AOT banner. <laughs> right? Like it. Mm, it, it was well, better on global mean, than it was in JP. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I know some banners were better on global because they had like Demon Melly and Ascanor and some banners that weren't on JP. Mm. Mm. But I, I think for festival exclusives, they should keep the same because it's, it's a different format of banners. It's not, it's not like... Um, Oh, just put, put general unfeatured, and then there's the feature. Like every single unit is a featured unit. They all have the same rates, so I think they shouldn't change. Generally, um, oh, you can go. Sorry. Ah, uh, but you're gonna put the rare on Lost Bane banner if she uh, she disappears from the game on first, and Lost Bane comes at first. You wanna put uh, the best PVE character. The on the next banner that uh, the, the, that Lost Bane comes. Mm. No, but I don't know. The, uh, the Redis banner ends of first, and for example, Lost Bane uh, drops on first. Are you gonna put the Redis on the same banner, the same day that she goes off? Well, yeah. they did the same thing. Well, the, see, I didn't think she was gonna be on Lost Bane's banner. But um, someone pointed out the other day that uh, Green Escanor, right? Because there's no part two when Green Escanor came out. He came out, and when his banner ended, he was on the next four banners until the part two banner came out. That is true. So it's not that it's it's not like they can't put Daria on his banner whenever she leaves, because they did the same thing with Green es uh, Escanor. Yeah, yeah, that's prior to part two tickets, though, don't you think? I don't it's like so. Part two comes out. They just make all the other, um, all the new banners pretty bad. No part two units on it anymore. Yeah, I, but that's that's not talking about a grand festival banner though. Oh, true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think festival banners at this point are the only banners for the place should be even summoning on. Yeah. Because absolutely. they have like all the good units pretty much. Well, that and the OC banners. Yeah. They have OCs on it. Elizabeth's banner was insane. It, it was. Lilia. What was the anniversary oh. banner though? And <laughs> it had yeah. Lilia. Yeah. Six six in that banner. So good. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they change the festival banner and make LV Melly like a little bit more rate up than mm. that point two five because mm. it's really stupid. It's it's blatantly a it's blatantly a cash grab. Well, yeah. have no rate up character. 
So and I feel like I feel like no, like Asian markets are more used to gotchas being like massive shafts, but I feel like they're more worried about I don't know. Are more worried about global players? Um. Well, global has the benefit of foresight, right? So I I want that to be a point five rate banner unit, right? As much as the next person, and have a rate yeah. up unit. The the thing is, there's 16 units on the banner, and the SSR rates bump to four percent. So you get more SSRs out of it, which is kind of nice. No, yeah. really. No, one really. percent, right? But you the ones you get are pretty trash. You take off that guaranteed, and you just realize how many shafts True. you get without getting guaranteed SSR. True. When I was stopping for Las Vegas, I was dying. No, was it, you get one every somebody. 300, though, right? On the LV bench, though. No, Lost Vein was just a guarantee at 900. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you know, I thought that was the the steps too. If they add the steps in too for the 300, that's fine. Like they do okay. with the AOT banner, you know. So for anyone that um, summoned on JP for Lost Vein, um, were you able to guarantee him more than once? No, you're because right. It was I a only month. did. I did the tickets and one multi, and I pulled them. So I, you know, I, I didn't do the 900. CM no, gold? wait, no, no, no. Lost Vein wasn't. Lost Vein was okay. not able to get guaranteed. Yeah, that's what I heard. Like, people was... said. Yeah. So um, it's like, even after the 900, at that point, it's not worth really for anyone. Unless, like, you're a mega well or something. All right, I just found it. It was uh, March 26th, and Derry came out the 27th on February. So it a was month a month later. Mm, okay. So, mm. unlike in JP turns, that's like a banner and a half, right? So. In global terms, it's like two it's like weeks. Four banners. Banners. <laughs> yeah. Global terms is like two weeks, though, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, if we're going yeah, to like, true, true. Yeah. Yeah. Time. so I don't know, maybe. Right? You oh. guys think the banner is going to cost nine hundred for global, or are they going to six hundred? Us? You, you know who's I'm, definitely going to be on the banner? <laughs> Fucking red Esteros. <laughs> <laughs> See, if, if they keep the banner like JP, um, Glock City has to come out in four days. Hmm. He should. I think. I think they're going to. I think it's gonna be the Arthur series. banner. Yeah. See, I was gonna say Blue Arthur, oh, Red King, yeah. or Black Stinia. Like those are the three units that aren't in the game yet. Right. Because right mm -hmm. now we're getting the free tickets right now on JP for the Helber multis. Right. So that's when the mm -hmm. we should start getting the free multis starting next Tuesday like for global. Right yeah. That banner is shit, though. <laughs> I all, the, all the free banners are shit. Yeah, but at least it's a lot of free coins though, so that's good. Oh all yeah. All right, to the next topic. Let's go super wicked. Wait, care. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the last thing about LV is: Are you excited for Las Vein Meliodas or very apprehensive? Hell, yeah, I'm excited. Let's go. All right. All rest will be back <laughs> on top. Feels. All rest will be back on top. A mere four. Um, it's all right. <laughs> He's been there, done think, that. Yeah, it's because I've I've used him every single day for the past um, how long has it been? Four months. It's like it's another day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the global players do not know. Cause I I got twenty five hundred gems right now. Oh jeez. I'm just Damn saying. Damn no, no. I just I just Damn buy the gem packs, but I don't spend on the banners. So. Okay. Hey. And spend somewhere else. Yeah. I'm I'm with 200 gems. You only have 200. Oh, no, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> 100 diamond gang. Uh, I I spent more go. than 1,000 on on the ready because hey, I hey, like. Hey, oh. carry. Hold on, I got I, I got a phone call. You a thousand? It, oh, it's CM Gold. He says the diamond oh, bogo has it. reset. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Third, every, every single week every resetting week. global. Yes, sir. Oh, I so wish that was on JP as well. Every oh. week, yes, sir. I, Why doesn't JP have that? So JP stupid. doesn't reset the bogo? I need to wait. Just wait the no, it's every two weeks. It's every two weeks on JP. It to my Is it every two weeks? Sure? Yeah, yeah, it's every two weeks. I, I checked. You know how I know? It feels like an eternity. Yeah, uh, well, it's, well, it's because every two weeks. Because the banners are every two weeks, right? So, like, the bogo is every two weeks. Hmm. Best. All right. JP's so weird. I know. It's very weird. Why would you stop players from spending? Why would you discourage players from spending money once a week? Because they listen to their player base over there. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shots <laughs> fired, CM Gold. <laughs> All right. I like I like taking shots at CM Gold. It's fun. 
All right. Next yeah, topic. We're now that we're off, off LV. Um, so we're going to be going over PvP rules, the meta, what's going on with that first, and then we'll do Super Awakening stuff. Don't worry, Nog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Reason why not came here. Yeah, I, I want to talk about Super Wing. Um, so right now on the Alex stream, we have Honey Homes. <laughs> uh, uh, we have the PvP meta that's going to be uh, that's been kind of going around now. We have the Pierce meta. We have Red Escort meta. Now Ulti Rush kind of getting resurgence with Derriere. Uh, we also have Eskimo coming back in the mix there too with the single target runs, all that stuff. Um, are you having fun with the current metas on global PvP with the PvP no. rules? No. Oh, PvP rules suck. No. no, PvP rules are horrible. And like, oh, always were. this is the thing. I spend money on this game. You know, I have most of the units. But the amount of RNG that goes into the PvP rules along with like all the different teams and stuff and what i mean by that is like the first week i got 1v3 by red king almost every single match the next week red guild thunder esterosa was a nightmare this week i i almost one shot his team <laughs> i almost one shot his team with my oh, blue king <laughs> Derriere lives because she has defense buff proceeds to one shot everybody it just it's it's so bad, man. I hate the rules. So it gets worse. It yeah, gets, yeah, worse, it gets worse. Yeah. No, I know. Imagine the crit roll with LV. Oh, that's gonna be so I, much fun. You'll love it. Like no passives, Cucks King. Whenever you can't use recovery skills, Cucks King. When ults are fifty percent less damage, Cucks King. I have an idea. Derriere stops range damage. Stop Cucks using King. King. <laughs> I, I agree with Alex. Stop using King. It's my favorite unit, man. You you know what's well, really funny? Can't blame Literally, the for not. No, know. but even without King, like in general, dude. On JP, they I, no, I, no, I don't think there's. Some, I don't think you're wrong no. about PvP yeah. rules, but I mean, like, we gotta no, I can't blame game. the. I can't blame the game. Yeah, like it just happens. No, no, no. The, you can blame King. the game, and they have to make better rules, and they have to make the rules less. Like, I think the problem that you guys are hitting on and not expressing explicitly is that the rules are dictating who wins and who loses. Yeah. Rather than it being about the player's skill. Yeah. And, or, or, the, or your builds or your gear. Yeah. And so you, you're losing control. You're losing agency in the battle. And you're just like, well, fuck this then. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We are not getting Blue Hellburn. <laughs> Dictate to um, who summons more on that featured uh, unit that gets to abuse the rules for that week. No, but I, even, uh, if you, even if you summon and, like, get... Like you can have a six six Derriere, right? But if you get like one or two Derriere cards, and then the other person who went second got three, that's just a rank up into Derriere boost into one shot. I think the worst, the two worst rules, or were the one the not the stance one, the the first week's rule, where oh, I can't remember what, the name, what they had in the first week for global. That was the first. Color advantage. Yeah. Color advantage. Yeah. The type. Yeah. Oh, that one's the worst okay, one ever. That's oh, the first goodness. worst one. The second worst one is the one they just put on JP last week, where if you put a debuff on someone, they get an ulti gauge. It was the fucking yeah. most toxic yeah, thing I've ever yeah. seen in my life. I, I, I tried to find them last week, and every single person was using the droll team. And yeah. every single match lasted at least 20 minutes. It was, and it's just not fun. It is. It's, it's just yeah. fun. I agree, so, man. Uh, I had so little fun. I never, I, on JPVP, I haven't had that little fun or low fun value in months. So that rule is stupid. But hang on. The, when it was, when it was the very first rule of global, which was advantage does more and disadvantage does less, so, the matches would be really fast, right? No. No. No, no because no, the 30% damage. What happens, well, as far as like my matches, because I ran, like Gother, Valenti, King, Merlin. My king would die to Escanor. And then I'd kill his entire team. And then his red king would just 1v3, my Valenti, Merlin, Gother. Every yep. time. Yep. Every mm. single time. And just, I think I think I'm the only one that likes these PvP rules, man. I'm okay, right. prior okay. to this, guys, there was only like two comps every single time, and everyone you use the same rotation. You go first, you do this card, this card, this card. Sure. Now I'm adjusting every single week. I get to see all these new units. Like, it's not stale for me, right? Like, every Monday I'm hyped to uh, try out the new rules. My viewers like it too. Bro, 
I Spam, enjoy it. Do you, do you, you kind of right? Kind of right. Spam, more play, variety now. Do you only play challenger? Or do you play top one hundred as well? I play top one hundred matches for fun, and over there, yes, um, since it matters more, I could tell the RNG takes a toll on you guys, right? But since I'm playing challenger for fun, it's just been relaxing. It's been enjoyable. Competitive the matches, matches well. with the rules are like extremely yeah. toxic and like they're not fun to play in in challenger like i have fun with the rules in challenger but yeah. i'm usually just you know out seeing seeing people better gear etc like yeah. in top 100 going against mystic with his 66 you are gear like mikasa y- you can't win you cannot win <laughs> yeah, yeah so the mikasa yourself baby uh no, man, i'm good yeah, it's again on JP. Every single person I face had at least base 250k CC. Yeah, which <laughs> it's, it's so annoying. All right, all it, right. It was like, so the reason I don't like it for competitive is it just brings this really negative aspect of the game where one team is extremely dominant and the other teams don't really hold a candle to that team. If you do it for challenger PvP, it's a little different because you're like about 30 to 50 percent of the matches are bot stomping so you're just having fun with what no matter what there's, there's no point of playing, playing i feel like it should have been a different game mode yeah like with the yeah because like if if the point of pvp was to like try hard and climb with you know the units you've built up and the team you've built up mm-hmm. now that they add the rules we have to switch team comps uh you have to build new units build new gear sets on top of the factor of even if I build the right team, I still don't get to dictate what happens in the match. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it, it just doesn't make sense that they put it that way. Also, I think that a uh, problem that has uh, that uh, elite uh, PvP is that we have two rules. One month, no, but, uh, yeah. th- those three weeks, and mm. one per week. And that monthly rule, if any any of your of your character dies, you win a 10% HP related stat that if you, for example, attack a, a Pierce team and don't kill Esca- Escanor, he's, every attack, he's gonna heal all, all himself. Yeah, that's annoying. That's... I hate that permanent rule, the one that lasts the whole month. Yeah. I like the the weekly changing ones, but that one makes his matches long. Makes hmm. uh, matches long. So, um, the the rules change very very often because of the weekly reset. But there are weeks in the future with no rules whatsoever. And oh. what's really interesting to see is when you go on elite PvP from all rules to no rules, PvP changes a lot, and hmm. there's a lot more experimentation. Oh, yeah. There was the this top 100 week with no rules that I just had so much fun playing. Yeah, it's so much more fun it than was, top 100. It was, it was like four months ago. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember. I, I was doing it too. I was like, oh, no rules! <laughs> I used Lost Vein, Two King, and Green Derriere. Oh, it was so fun. Yeah. it's <sighs> Top 100 is way more fun with no rules. Because you can experiment and have fun and push, and it's not like a negative thing. And Green Derriere was unironically good. Yes. I feel like... I feel like if the rules, not that it, the rules are good, but if the rules would have came out before, it wouldn't have been as bad because like now it's the same thing with JP, right? Now you have to like do so much to build a character that for you to build a new character for PVP is just like you got to do so much. Like you have to make a UR gear set for that unit. Um, you got to make sure you have like a lot of dupes into the unit, cosmetics, or you just get like out combat class. Oh, it gets worse, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying. On JP, it's even worse. Why because now super you got awakening super and. Awakening. I think it's only for drop 100, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, what that's what he's describing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like you just stacking all of these things on top of each other. Just makes it worse and worse. Yeah. It's also the thing, right? Now, with uh, the new season of Top 100 on JP, the best team is the Droll team. Yes. And if you don't if you don't have draw built up, yep. now it's another character has to give you our gear. You have to max out the cost not, not only buy all the costumes, but also max out the costumes. Yep. Um just it's so much. Gotta have him four six at least to super awaken. And if you not don't, so well guess what? I just lose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're gonna talk yeah, about that later, right? We don't, we don't have a date for that. <laughs> no, yeah. I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Alright, we're yeah, so maxing out commandments too, because they're expensive. 
I mean, a giant gang emote coming soon. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we've already kind of addressed this, but just to be very to just finish this out really quickly on the PvP rules for this question on it do you guys think that pvp rules currently bring a very positive element to the game or a very negative element to the game negative positive and negative i don't yeah. see any any different um uh, pvp rules are for bringing variety to to pvp but on global i i always seen the same tips mm. that's it peers mono red and ultras I don't see anything different. Sometimes I see an Esterosa, the Rieri, but... The weak... I think the problem with PvP rules in general is that since they're, since they're a week, uh, the next, you can just skip PvP for a week or just do your bare minimum for a week, and then the next week you go for the rule that really works for you. And it, it's a big hindrance on players that aren't able to build out every single unit in the game and like even for streamers that are have like are able to like put lots of money into the game and do lots of cool things it takes a lot of effort to build a character especially for geared pvp so it's only going to get harder and they need to if they want to put the pvp rules in a good way to the game to create variety they need to have rules that are make things a little bit easier for players to build out units because otherwise it's impossible it's a give or take i remember like last podcast or last month we were complaining how there's only two comps and it was getting stale and then like this one's not perfect either the rules aren't perfect it doesn't make pvp more fun or anything like that but there's always going to be a positive or negative about like you know what they want to do with the game pvp wise the rules themselves are like I don't think it's bad. I feel like it's bad how they implemented it. Like, like I said, if they would have made it a different game mode, so it's like, all right, you know, I'm sick of seeing these two, three teams. I want to spice it up. You could play the, you know, one with rules, but they're forcing it on geared PVP. So if you want to play geared, you have to use the rules. And I feel like that's what's the negative about it. You have to do it. I don't really want to play Instead. costume wars though, you know, like an ungeared. <laughs> No, yeah, exactly. That's why it was like a third game mode where you could choose geared, ungeared, or PvP rules. Then it gives them the option of doing what they want and having, you know, so. Yeah. I don't think the player base is big enough for that, but that'd be really dope. Like, I'd enjoy that too. Great Cross is huge. What do you mean? Yeah. But, like, I face bots 90% of the time. I can't imagine, like, facing real people in the rules section since no one likes the rules, right? But the rules well, mode. you also start your stream. Uh, at a very weird time when you're when, when you initially do your PvP. When, oh, he does it on purpose so that he when faces bots. Yeah, when I know. when I stream around, oh, I yeah. stream around uh, we and, know, right? It's Anytime like, I stream, uh... I face all, I face almost all people. <clears throat> like whenever I stream around the time I do, it's almost all people. I rarely face bots. If, if you st oh. try try PvPing off stream and the same time spam does, you'll fight only bots. It's it's incredible. You get so many coins. Or oh, fight during a week with like, like shitty PvP rules, and then just like we're like, done. Kind of Yo, yeah, I you got your back, think it's a bot forfeit. I'll get off him. All right. So <laughs> yeah, the I, um, I, like playing, I like playing global because when I play GP, I actually only face bots if you yeah. up on hunt. So when I play global, I'm like, this is good. I yeah. only face people. It's good. Yeah, you, you you can only fight bots in JP PvP. Like, I mean, I think one in every ten matches you fight a pro person, and you're like, oh my god, it's like, oh, he's using real food. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm using coin food. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Um. So, what PvP rules would you like to see in the future to make things better for PvP, rather than what we have right now with like HP rule, the the type advantage rule? What PvP rules? Card do you based think rules. No fast of exclusive rule. I mean, that's more for JP, but like yeah, God. something like that. God, do I yeah, Nag that? is right. So rare rule rules for rare units, rules for SR units. I those love those. They had that. that. I, love, they I had like those. Yeah, they on JP. They had and it. And then I want card based stats. rules. They do have card based really rules. Fun. So Which like if sad. you play if you play more than three cards of a character in like a turn or two, you get a debuff or something like that. So you want Doc Senior's commandment? Yeah, I was gonna say his, his... <laughs> Yo. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, right. Or it's, it doesn't have to be a doesn't have to be a, it could be a negative thing or a positive thing, right? So it make you know. Or like yeah, no, most we... players play with their hands revealed or some shit like that. My favorite <laughs> rule so far. Rules? Go ahead. Oh no. I, well, I feel like Alex is basically saying rules that don't. Make it art. You can still dictate how you win without 
it being like a rule that just like kind of f's you over because like it's conditional yeah, yeah. exactly like choosing the three cards doesn't make you lose the game you have to just think more exactly yeah yeah and you I have to you. plan your team but if you plan you can't plan ahead when it's counter stances take 50 percent less damage you just exactly fucked. yeah or you, you, use, it, or you use guild under guys yeah exactly. so the uh the rule for 50 percent increased single target damage that was it was kind of cool like one tapping eskimo was fun it was satisfying. Yeah, it's oddly satisfying to do that. Like one or two times. But like it's not good for like a whole week or a competitive scenario, right? Yeah. So um it's good for memes. But what's uh one of the most fun rules was that you brought up with card rules. The my favorite rule that they brought out so far was no healing skills for a whole week. That was fucking fun. Cause that negated Lilias and that negated Kings, and you were like, yeah, he's so salty. <laughs> "I was like, having so much fun just using so crit salty. teams and craziness. It was fun, just like clapping people. Like, <laughs> no, no winged characters allowed. No, no winged don't. characters. Allowed. <laughs> no fairy no races. My, my green king is six six. I'm about to bring him out. I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> Dark skin be like." No healing. We, what you say? No bro. healing. <laughs> and then because they, they brought the buff to Arthur so early too. Oh my god, Arthur and Red Merlin. Oh Red yeah, Arthur's problem. a bad. Arthur's a yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was a nice. That was a nice buff for Arthur though. He needed it. No, no, he definitely needed it. But it's just like compared to JP, right? Because JP they brought it out like when way like, late, way later. Yeah, Recently. Arthur got it month four, month five. It, it definitely shook things up. Um, yeah. Arthur, uh, so Arthur has been the best unit since launch uh, as far as, like, the yes. unit that people could, like, get and then use. I, and I told people that because I, I talked about humans since, like, release of yeah. Global, and people thought, they just thought I was crazy. I got a reroll for Green Belly, by the way. <laughs> people just thought I was crazy. I was just like, Arthur's so good. Arthur's so good. He's been the best unit since launch. It's crazy. And then, like, he, like, of course, got worse because of Asking and all that stuff. And, like, he's Not fallen the best out. unit, but the most, like, universally yeah, used. Yeah. Best gotcha based unit that's been around for the longest. Yeah. He's on every banner. He's in the gold coin shop. He's, like, the best free to play option. Yeah. Yeah. Blue Arthur. I've been using him forever. You know? Yeah. I can't wait for blue SSR Arthur, man. That's going to be so fun. <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's going to move off of PvP rules for now. Um, we're gonna go into Nog's favorite topic because he wants to talk about it so bad. His face has been like, yay! <clears throat> Scree. Okay, um, we're gonna be going over Super Awakening changes and we're gonna talk about those. So, to preface this, if you don't know what Super Awakening is, it is the ability to get extra stats on your characters so that you can boost them, um, but you can only get it if you have ultimate levels. Uh, rank one, everybody can get. Rank two, you can only get if you have rank two out of six ultimate. Rank three, three out of six ultimate, etc. It goes up to four out of six. However, the changes that they're bringing right now are they're considering removing the ultimate level requirement. But what they're also doing is they're incre thinking about increasing the amount of Super Awakening coins it will cost in order to get the Super Awakening done. So... What this does is it allows people to then get the Super Awakening on their characters, but it will cost them twice as much. Do you think the changes are, that are made right now are what we needed, or do you think that we needed something different? Okay, okay, okay. I need to preface this. I, I've been needing one more coin for Fraudron for so long, and I got it almost the day they announced that they were going to remove the thing, so I'm so pissed. But <laughs> also... also I think it's really <laughs> stupid because they mentioned in those dev notes I have that six, six. they worked on on giving more tickets and helping people. They didn't do that. They said that in the last dev notes, not only not that long ago, and the game haven't changed. So I'm, I don't know why they even mentioned that. But I, I guess it's good that they removed that. But I would have preferred. Okay. I, I did notice preferred. an uptick in tickets though, uh, as far as like last like month or so. It, it did increase. That's what I'll, I'll I, say. I didn't notice. Well, I think it's because we had like well, we had LV banner, the free Matrona banner, and then we had uh, no, but that, the, that that wasn't when they mentioned it. They yeah. mentioned it not so long ago that they were gonna give more tickets to yeah. compensate for the the super awakening. They also said uh, they were gonna be more super awakening coins. They basically like tripled or quadrupled the amount of super awakening coins we're getting, which really helped. Yeah, they did get more, but not tickets. I'm upset. Is, but, is Tower of Trials worth it now? It's been worth it, but no. it's just no. hard. 
Damn, because I watched your I watched your season one video and it seems really fun, but the rewards are just not that good. Oh, season they doubled. They doubled. Yeah. Season three. Was Eskinor. Season three was so much easier to RNG than trying to L R RNG Meliodas full counter in season two. <laughs> So I like when I was trying to RNG it. It only took me like three hours to like RNG. It. I'm like, oh, it wasn't that bad. It only took three hours to get the RNG to actually clear it. <laughs> and then I was season like, season two I completed without needing RNG, which was nice. Yeah, well, season two kind of needed, not really. I don't know, maybe because I got super lucky. But season three it took me a few days because I just wasn't getting the RNG done. Yeah, the the getting the RNG for the melee cards that you need early on, and then not the the non crit and the crit was kind of annoying. Oh, the trick was uh, removing the association. <laughs> okay, so guys, back to Super Awakening. Do you guys think that uh, it's what we needed? Anyways, I think they could have dropped an item that would give you an ult level. That would have yeah. been so good for any character in the game. Um, or they could have done both, just remove the, the thing and drop the item. But I would have really liked that item for characters I can't get anymore, like Levi, because I pulled six I pulled seven copies of Eren and six of Mikasa and only two of Levi on JP. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted just six six Levi, but I also was thinking of my money. So I didn't. You know, now I really regret it. I wish I did, but I can't anymore. So I would prefer if they did went on that way, drop an item to give both levels so we can compensate for Super Awakening. But removing that thing is also good. And it's good because Global might just get the Super Awakening thing already patched. So JP really did be testing picks, which is um, sad. But what can we do? Listen, Global stays winning, I guess. It's upsetting. I hate Super Awakening, though. I wish they never came to the game. All right, that's my opinion. Mm. They just need more. I think, I think what they're doing is a step in the right direction. It's not necessarily fixed because, like, double the cost still means that, like, you know, the pay to play players are going to have an advantage with dupes and everything, right? And Super Awakening wasn't necessarily about getting the resources to do it, it was more about the pay to play players having the advantage because they have more dupes. So, like, they're still going to have the advantage with more dupes. Yeah. Granted, you don't it, like that restriction isn't on there. So like, like I said, it was a step in the right direction, but I agree with Nagato. Like, I feel like they should have dropped an item and it doesn't have to be something that anyone can get all the time, but um, you know, maybe a limited resource that's whatever, you know, final boss reward, whatever the case may be. However you want to do it, that gives you a a dupe into a character so that you're able to do yeah. it. I think placement players over here. Uh, the, yeah. the, the I stone, think whatever. acquisition stone. Yeah, acquisition stone. Let's go. I, I think if we could buy those for rainbow coins, that would be perfect. Like they yeah. they could cap that, and they just make it easy. Like uh, you could pull on a banner and you get shafted or whatever, and then it could be say ten ten rainbow coins, and every so often you go on discount for seven or whatever, and that or would make it fair because that's the only one one festival exclusive coin. Or yeah, that would be oh. good too. One festival coin for that. That'd be perfect. They can make it like a tower reward or something like that, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last, it's the last stage of tower. But yeah, like you said, it is a step in the right direction. At least now, like you know, everyone can get coins over time, even if it's a long time. You can't get good RNG over time. You know, oh. you can't buy that. Yeah, you can't. You know, just some like well, not get dupes. You know. Back to your idea. If they did it for that, it would <laughs> it, it would have to be something that wouldn't work on festival units then. That's fine. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I just want to. I just would have loved cheese on my front. Yeah. <laughs> like festival um, units, I don't think they should get the dupe coin. Like if we get a dupe item, I don't think they should be able to use it. That'd be too OP. Yeah. yeah. We would all hate um, that. Um, okay, so um, next thing we're going to talk about super awakening. What would you do to change their super awakening requirements to be fair to all players? Um, when we're looking at Super Awakenings, there are there's the ulti level requirements. There are issues with being able to get the XP. Is is there something that you guys would change to make this better? I would love if you were actually required to use the unit for a long time. Imagine having missions to get the Super Awakening, like clear a stage a hundred times or whatever. With kind, kind of like what they're doing on Dragon Ball Z for the links or whatever for the. Kind of, yeah. Like, but like actual missions, like play X amount of PvP matches with the unit, play X amount of free stages with the unit, get the super awakening. That would have been pretty dope. 
Yeah. I wish they did that. That'd be cool. And make it grind to win. I like it. I, actually, yeah, I think that's cool too. Because like, basically, if you don't use the unit, you can't just, you know, super awaken them as soon as you want. But mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like however they want to do it, it should be something that you have to grind. Not saying it should be an easy grind, but you should have to grind it simply because um, as a whale, say you never use the unit ever, then you just, oh, well, I need to use this unit. Let me super awaken. Or say you're a free-to-play player that always uses this unit, but you can't super awaken them. It's kind of that type of thing. So it's like, I feel like gr being able to grind it, especially with missions, would be a really, like, really good, uh, you know, answer to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't have, like, really deep missions in the game, if you yeah. really look at it. Like, we have, three. yeah, the daily missions are all, like, do X. They, they have never changed those missions. Um, and then, I mean, we have, like, the, uh, the book of missions or whatever, but we, we also just complete them over time. We really never think about them. Right. So coffee, Alex? You need some coffee? <laughs> I got you. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I swear we're not Mimi on you in chat. <laughs> Weird boys stay quiet. Yeah. All right. No, um, um right. to to just add on to what you guys are saying. Um they will introduce what Nag is talking about with the stuff with the with the coin, the the whatever universal alt level coin. They will add that eventually, but it's way too soon to add that mm. because once you add something to game once you add something to the game, especially if you're gonna put a dollar value on it it's eventually going to lose its value over time. And so because as the game progresses and gets older and as the the game, the population of the game, uh, the players of the game, uh, as they get older, new players have to come in. And so they need more of a bump. So you have to lower the price of things that are older in order to allow them, like, for example, Awakening Stones were really expensive on Blue Awakening Stones were really expensive on Global when they came out. We look over on JP and it's a fucking joke. It's like, you know, half the cost or less. Because the same items at the beginning can't be as expensive a year later. It just doesn't work. So they don't want to introduce something that good this early because they're just going to be losing out potentially on millions of dollars. So when that shit gets introduced, maybe at like the two-year anniversary, I would, I would guess, it's going to be mad expensive. And they want to keep it that expensive and they want to keep it rare and keep it super premium for as long as possible. Especially for those units, AOT, Slime, other collabs. This is why we love Alex. <laughs> not yeah, sorry, not the <laughs> that's why I don't want to do it. Hey, wait, wait. You, nice you said you know they're releasing it? Net Marble employee confirmed. Thank that's you. That's right. Number four three nine six two. Yeah. Yo, can you confirm so, two CM gold? Double confirmation? Yeah. <laughs> so I agree. That that sounds like that's something that's gonna happen. It, like there was a there's there's a couple of videos out there about like how gotcha games have a of a life cycle and like this they have a cycle of what they release. And uh, that that kinda holds a candle to what you said. They have to value things and then devalue things over time and then have surge, but also give accessibility to new players. So I agree. All right. It could release initially only play paid item. Like, you know, they have this uh, 240 gem pack that costs 100 bucks. Just at first initial release, make it only available once, sometimes in that pack, you know, and then mm -hmm. gradually make it more accessible and so one day it's free i feel like diamonds Some have kind of lost their value on jp as much as on they are in global because we buy too much <laughs> yeah. diamonds lost their value on global for me like month one man oh, okay. <laughs> mr two right. diamonds over here like 90 percent of the player base is just like what are you saying yeah what? <laughs> huh? let me see some of those bro because you need so many you need so many of them to get what you need on jp right now right because we're working everything so I feel like they've kind of lost value in comparison to like how valuable you could you could get more bang for your buck on global. You got to realize like early JP, we were rerolling gear, base stats, all that with gems. That sucks. So it's like that sucked, Dick. Yeah, so gems already lost their value like at the beginning of JP. So it's like on global. You guys were stupid. No, no, no like, there were no there anvils. No anvil. There were no anvils. There were no none of that. Were stupid. So we had. <laughs> I mean, why would you do that? It's a premium currency. You need that shit to get characters. Yeah, what the fuck? Are you gonna get that was the only way you characters. could get substats. Yeah, that was the only way you could get perfect gear. gear if it doesn't go on anybody. It, it, you literally had such a massive advantage against other players with full SSR gear. It was ridiculous. Yeah. You fought a dude with full SSR gear. It was it was better than pulling any character in the world. Like you, you've used a CS Vaughn versus someone for like two months. Okay. You're like, kick W, kick W. Hey, why'd you get one tap? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, true. My bad. <laughs> yeah, my bad. man, that was so. It's like gym's already just I like it just doesn't mean anything already. <laughs> oh, we look stupid, Alex. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. I can see what he's saying, but at the same time, gems are very important. Please give us more gems. Yeah, we like more gems, please. (laughs) I feel more maintenance. I was looking back at my old videos, and on the Valentine's banner, I was almost crying because it took me 390 gems to pull my last Valentine's banner. You see? You see what it means? Do you see what I mean? 390 and like love over like 900 deep, bro. I I haven't got it yet. I'm going to keep going. Last (laughs) month, it took me 1.6k to pull one Ludosio. One. And I 6'6 that guy. Let me me tell you. 300 gems back in the day was too many gems. Yeah. (laughs) But... Back when I we think, were all I like, think our perception of the game has really changed. Yeah, <laughs> oh. it's definitely 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 different, definitely different now. All right, so um, last thing on Super Awakenings, do you think there's other things they could do with Super Awakenings for weaker characters? Right now, for SR units and rare oh, units, yeah. what happens in Super Awakenings, for those who don't know, is the amount of stats that you gained on SR and rare characters is actually much less than what you would get for an SSR character. Mm-hmm. Um, on what? certain SSR characters, you actually get less stats on Super Awakenings than other SSR characters. And the stat I mean, difference was very... was garbage. It was so sad. It was super Super Awakening Houser is so Bad. It's so bad. Uh, so, do you think that? Um, so now that you know that super awakenings are not uniform for all characters and they're very different per character, do you think that there's something that they should do in order to make weaker characters better in the future? Initially, when it was announced, I was talking to um, a few friends, and we were hoping that super awakening wouldn't be how it is, and it actually would be like AZAs from Dokkan. Oh yeah, I wish. So let's that. say blue nunchuk bomb garbage. But he gets super awakened. He's good now, you know. And then they would, you know, release first for the old characters and then stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, what? Well, you know, that's a joke. Is um, blue brawler bond? If you're not, if you're not playing red demon, right? On PvP, imagine if with an EZA, uh, his stats get insane to the point where he hits as hard as Darryari or something. That would be crazy. They can um, actually do that. They use awakening to rework characters. Yes, yeah, that's that a little fucked. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, so instead, the- I was actually talking about this yeah. with someone the other day. Me. And we were we were just talking, <laughs> yo, you <laughs> so we were talking about like um it call it like it being like a reawakening. Like yeah. say for SRs, after they get reawakened, they'd be like a base SSR type of deal, and their stats would all be better and stuff like that. I feel like that'd be really good because there's a lot of cool rares and SRs in the game that no one would even like remotely use just because they get beat out on stats and like since that's the case we just completely forget about them but um even with the ssrs though i think if you changed it so like you know how we have four six super awakening right now what if the weaker characters instead of having just like a locked amount of a big stock at four six super awakening go into five six and six six super awakening and that would be their easy a and you can get acquire that in a way easier fashion. So there would be like a stage that you could clear, very similar to Dogon, where there would be 30 levels that you would have to clear. <laughs> and then you, you just could- copy straight up. <laughs> just like straight up copy, right? And you get 30 <laughs> diamonds out of it, and it gets progressively more difficult as you go on. That's and you get lots of Super Awakening coins along the way in order it's to Super Awakening a character. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, but essentially what would happen is like on the 5, 6, and 6, 6 Super Awakening, right? You would also get so many more stats okay. that it would actually be a, equivalent to, almost equivalent to a Festival Coin character. That would be a something, festival? yeah, on, on their Super Super Awakening, whatever you want to call it, the 5, 6 Super Awakening. Blue. Like, if you, if you got like, say, Blue Brawler Bond and his, like, randomly, he got Super Awakened, or Green Meliodas got randomly Super Awakened, and they got substats and stats on 5, 6, and 6, 6 Super Awakening to go all the way up to 6, 6, and they could just be almost the same as LV Melly, just like a hair underneath, like 5% less, that would be kind of cool. So Escanor stats, just as an SR, huh? Yeah, like Escanor level, no, no, SSR, like like old SSRs. And then like for rare and SR units, they could do something similar where they could have like multiple different variants that you could do at the same time, like two, like a green Meliodas and a red Meliodas and a blue Meliodas and all those could be five, six of Super Awakened. And then like the SR variants of them too could also be Super Awakened. That would be cool. 
super what super if awakened. they what if they use four five and six levels of super awakening to increase or make better some of the abilities for example oh, uh, okay. Melioda, uh, green meliodas we need a a buff for his passive simple winning instead of more critical chance critical chance and a bit of attack or something like that Ooh, okay instead of um, gaining more stats gaining more abilities be interesting. there are some games that uh, that have that mechanic for example epic seven yeah. there are some yeah. some awakens who increase one of the characters skills i'm not sure that seems like it could be too early for that kind of thing. Because if you put in another mechanic into get characters too early, then other pe then people expect that same thing for other characters. So I'm not sure if it's good, especially with the way that the card system works, because you get a total of seven cards with max characters and then six cards and five cards as time goes on. So if, if you're going to be using that type of idea where you have more cards, then that extra ability would take up a card slot with what you have. So no, he was talking about the passive. Like yeah, talking about passive. Not if a it's a, an actual passive no. on top of it, there it'll be really similar to commandments. So that might be okay. Mm, that's true. Yeah, like if you had a passive that did two things, it's no different. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. So, like, what, what's a grace? <laughs> Yo, what's, what's a grace? Oh, sorry, Yo, what's it, a grace? <laughs> like, uh, what was, up you guys? You know what I, I was reading it the first time like, when Ludo came out. I was like, "What is a grace?" And then I was trying to like, I, I was like, "Oh, it works as a passive and a support." Oh, like I freaked out a little bit. Okay, that's cool. So, what, we can't talk about Eskimo though. That Shrek is a nipple. It has that Shrek has titties. What's going on in the chat right now? Whole room. Yeah. So they were I, doing this the other day. Yeah, they are. I I, I changed the chat proportions so they, they doesn't show up on the video. <laughs> oh, true. Nice. Oh, that shrek right, has nipples. Yes, oh, it does. It but uh, oh. yeah, it has it has some spicy. That's a beppo. Wow. Yeah. We have commands for him too. All right. Well, that's all, I, all the topics I got today. We actually ended under an hour, and now we can shoot the shit about dumb shit. Uh, I'm very happy that we made it under an hour finally. Good job, team. Good job. I love your hair, Sarkin. Thanks. I think you should be like that. Um, so my wife came on stream randomly with a, a gloved hand and bleach, and they just went. <laughs> and I said, what's that? And she's like, nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no hours later <laughs> well your I nuggets bleach bleached my hair um, and dye almost all of it as gray and it will look so bad it will oh you're gonna have to bleach it so many times yes it will look you, have you dyed your hair before never yeah um, your hair is really dark eh yeah so this this is from like one bleaching i think the most time you can spend with bleaching your hair is like 45 minutes or 50 before you have to wash it out and then do it again yeah it's gonna be like three no. four hours that man's about to go bald bro it's great no because it damages you it eats your hair right mm -hmm. yeah. So if you leave it in for more than an hour it's just you're gonna be fucking you will be fucking bald so you have to wash it out and then it'll be like an orange and then you do it again it's like 20 minutes Boom. this is this is 20 minutes no by the way, way bro oh your hair is way lighter than his though uh you sure I he I mean his I mean his looks dark. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean so I, I have like freaking well here's dark ass fucking roots. hair, bro. Do I don't know. Huh? Maybe we we're just looking at the top. Yeah, it might be. Well, of course it looks well. light right now. I don't have any way of showing you actually how dark my hair is because I cut it all off. Listen, I make terrible life decisions. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah, I was trying to come to next podcast with all these hair colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'll dye the tips of my hair, but that's it. I can't dye all my hair. Frosted tips. I do like the additions oh, of little hard. emote things in the corner. And it livens things up a bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like your yeah, Eskimo yeah, Uwu. It's nice. It Mad never dog. fails. Nagato's had like three ambulances. And every time, man, the train just comes by. It <laughs> it's almost it like the train's fails. on the schedule. <laughs> but it, the train, it never comes if I'm not like in VC doing something or i'm recording if i'm not recording it just doesn't come that day yeah like 
It never fails, man. There are only ambulances when I e- either click record or, or I'm here. It's yep. either or. Every it's a time. Lot. It's a lot. So what are, what's with these questions in chat, man? I don't know. Okay. DS Frosted Locks Gaming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little Cri- dip. Crispy tips. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, what crispy nips and crispy tips. <laughs> oh, don't kill me. Carrie said Nagula? they changed the- Yo, Nagula. <laughs> Change the effect of cards. Nagula. Oh yeah, Carrie, that'd be cool. Like they add, Chocula. Yo, imagine they added like a a C damage multiplier on top of like Green Melly's ability. That would be fucking broken. Mm. Well, well if they have a AVP rules where ranged attacks do more damage. GP exclusive. Mm. Is that CD in the third? Wait, what? The the picture. Is that C's? That's what I see. I don't know. Nah, Steph, I didn't have my water this morning. I was drinking orange juice. Oh, it's Dr. Disrespect. Oh, I see it now. I see the shades. Oh, it's from that video head that he cries, huh? Oh, he mm-hmm. took off his stuff, right, right, right? Big fucking mistakes, man. Whatever yeah. he says. Stupid he, fucking mistakes, man. Have you seen Doc lately on YouTube? It's actually kind of crazy. Like, when he starts those streams, it's kind of cool. Like I've, ne- I've never seen Doc on a stream before, and it was like it was fire. He comes yeah, in. He's always been high production value. Yeah. Look at that coffee pasta in chat. Yeah. Hey, have y'all ever had like melted ice with frozen water? Yeah. It's fucking bomb. Melted what? what? <laughs> melted ice with say? frozen water. That's just water. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not... Hear him out. Hear him out. Can, can you explain better for this one? Yo, it's melt. <laughs> Listen, melted ice with frozen water. I think he already tried to dye his tips, bro, and it went to the root of his brain. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> his brain, bro. It's yeah. not my fault. You're not cultured, man. Melted yep. ice with frozen water. Is... Yo, what are you trying to say? Not cultured. Yo, to, to if you want to try that the right way though, dark skin. What you gotta do is you gotta get the melted ice, put it in a martini shaker, right, and then put the frozen water on top of the martini shaker. And then close it up, shake it all up, and then pour it out, and then you'll have the best water. Okay. Okay, okay. I'll try that. Yeah. No cap, actually. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's so confused. Second, though. Second, though. It's hilarious. Some people don't understand sarcasm. Some people don't understand. The Grand Cross podcast. Yeah. You gotta... There isn't any. There's only one. What a community. Yeah. I really, you know, I gotta get the Eskimo bartender shaker going. <laughs> <laughs> could be fun all right well that's gonna be it for the podcast thank you guys for coming out hope you guys enjoyed the stream hope you guys enjoyed the podcast um everyone say bye shout out your channels so you can hey diaz gaming you already know fairy gang in the building giant gang in the building twitch.tv slash uh spamming rice oh you should check me out <laughs> yo congrats on 100k bro i got hey, 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 hey. 100k. That's cute, man. I have my hair like Shin. Yeah. Now you can get any e girl you want. Ever. <laughs> Don't tell you. He already has, yeah, he already has the e girl he wants. Before the 100k. That's when you know she's a real one, bro. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Hey. Ooh. True. Yeah. Carrie, you going to say anything? We're waiting on you to say something in, in Alex. I, I think <laughs> in some jokes, but are on, on Spanish and. and. <laughs> If you want hey, to say in Spanish, English I don't. I, I will. Everything. I will it's not translate, know. but listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's <laughs> Alex, cynic Alex. If you didn't know, he didn't shout his channel because he's freaking Papega. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Seton Whale Cinema Spending. Okay, what there you go. The... Thank you. <laughs> God, dibs on being Kabuki. This is what I actually look like. I think. I think this this whole stream carry should have been translating our English into Spanish so that people watching Spanish should understand. I've missed opportunity. Maybe next time. Um, we did the same thing for Looney. Like this time, I wanted to do a lot less editing on the the thing. Oh yeah, with uh, 